hydroponics can grow anything in the world, you just, different types of systems do different things better. So quality over quantity for us is a main stake. These are three weeks. Okay, and then they will be in this channel for how long before they're harvested? Uh, three more weeks. So we do about, uh, we're down to about 900 heads of lettuce a week. Wow. Um, restaurants keep our lettuce, can keep our lettuce for up to about six weeks. Wow. And then uh, they're usually using it within three to four days. This is the deep well or deep culture system. And the this is what most people think of when they think hydroponics. Now we're using recycled thing. We're using byproducts a lot as means to make this work. But it is not, strictly speaking, a regenerative process. It is next door to it. That's one of the big things is, is the ability to shift a system. How easy is it to, to, to pivot from this system to something else? Right now we have one type of hydroponics, but we have done several types of hydroponics and we can even show later on a start of another type of hydroponics. Okay. Um, and hydroponics can grow anything in the world, but you just different types of systems do different things better. Okay. Um, and you can shoehorn other things into that system, but, and stretch what it actually covers. But, right. Yeah. So, so what system do you have so right we now? So we use NFT and um, actually we can go look at that now. Let's do it. Okay. So this is when we get back from market, we wash uh, the totes out and that's what all those, and then this is oh, where we wash totes? our okay. NFT channels and we oh, will cool. show you what an NFT channel is. And yes, we built that ourselves. Very cool. So this is the entryway and this is an NFT channel. Oh. Nutrient film technique. So the purpose is it has a tiny amount of water in the bottom that runs down and then it flows over the roots and this allows for a higher amount of aeration to the roots and faster growth. Okay. Generally speaking, hydroponics can grow twice as fast in, uh, as in the ground with about half the space. Okay. That is a That's broad, really cool. broad generalization. So the later thing when we show you the deep well system or also called deep culture system, uh, is we're going to grow tomatoes. And okay. that's, these are starting out here because it's too cold outside. So this is a different system that you're going to be in, enabling yes. later. Yes, okay. and we can show the, the final bits. It's not quite put together, but we can show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is your greenhouse. This is a huge greenhouse. So yeah, so this is uh, our greenhouse. And we started with half the sides, so you can see where the floor kind of transitions. Okay. Yeah. So this was the first half. Uh, started that back in 2011, and me and my family built this. We built all of this, except for the concrete work. We don't do concrete work. Okay. Because <laughs> that's one of those things, if you muck it up, it's not going to be right ever. Yeah. And you don't know that until later. So this is what an NFT system looks like. And so we use a continuous flow system, which means that the plants uh, get water all the time every hour of every day and they go so it goes into the pump out of the pipe into the pump up the uh, pipes into here and then there's a trough on the back side that catches it and then it gravity feeds back in so it's just recycled water yep all day with long. nutrients and acid adjusted this is one week of uh prop of operation then this section here is this another week and then a third so week. so it's successioned down yes so we do in order to get a little more production out, we got four weeks on table right now, but we generally run a three week cycle okay. on a uh, table and then three weeks in propagation. Okay. So this is where it starts. So this is where like the seedlings are. Yes. So this to this is one week of growth. Wow. And when we get to the seedling room in a minute, we can show you what, uh, what it starts as. What is this stuff? So that is Oasis Cube. It is uh, an inert medium and it's one of the two or three biggest things that you would use as a medium in this. So there's medium and mediumless. Uh, mediumless is, is more fine balanced. So we use a medium system just because it is a much more stable system. Uh, and commercial operation, you gotta have a constant rotation, you can't be down. And so Oasis, rock wool, and cocoa uh, fiber are the three main uh, types. Rock wool, we have, uh, we've had issues with in the past for okay. uh, um, contaminations. And then not that most people don't, most people prefer rock wool, okay? okay. And cocoa fiber because it's, uh, it's a renewable resource okay. in that, you know, very simple to get a hold of. 
Uh, it is uh, an expanding system, okay? So whenever, whatever you start with, it will expand outwards. And so that's, we wanted a stable system, and so Oasis was the choice for us. So are these reusable? They are not. Okay. But they are a byproduct from another industry. This is something that is already recycled. And then you just like cut it into pieces when you so, put it in here? Um, oh, it, I well, see the bottom of it here. Is that the bottom? I could show you how uh, we put a channel together. Sure. Okay. That if sounds good. If it works good. out, cool. Yeah. All right, so um, we put the tables on, on rollers because it's just simpler and much nicer. Now, biggest benefit over ground crops. Everything's at waist level, no bending over. Yeah. Everything's much better. All That's right. nice. For us, first thing we would do is wash our hands, okay. actually. So I won't touch anything. Yes. Also, anything red is probably dangerous. Uh, don't touch it. Okay. So why is uh, that? Because we have a couple of valves that will shut down parts of the system that are red. And we also have two buckets that are red. Those are our acid. Okay. So not trying to get burned. Yes. <laughs> well, this is a bit stronger than even what is. Our acid runs about zero on the pH scale. Wow. And, various. <laughs> and if we could use more chlorine-based stuff, I'd actually go stronger because the less I have to put into a thing, I've actually found the more stable it is. Why do you need the acid? Plants naturally make the water more basic as long as they're healthy. If you go below whatever the level, uh, whatever the pH is, which is the amount of acidity in uh, the water, when you go below their prescribed level, they will then begin to die off and they will actually make it more acidic. The issue is the, uh, when you mess it up, it becomes worse and worse and worse and worse. So this is a finishing channel. This is what we finish in. Okay. Normally we would go to a nursery channel first, but we've gotten rid of that step entirely and we're seeing how that works. So you come over here and you just snap off some stuff, some cubes, and then you just break them. Make sure the little roots get in the thing and I usually just spiral them in. And then, so like this guy has a little one, maybe he'll come in, maybe he won't. Okay. It doesn't hurt to put them in there. Worst Do they ever like fall down? Yes. Okay. And then you have a plant that grows in here and then you have water flowing over because yes, <laughs> film of water, if you have a blockage, turns into overflowing of yep. water. Nope, and then you're crawling underneath the table and looking, okay, why is this leaking? <laughs> Actually, that's probably the most common statement of, of, of what's going wrong is, okay, why is this leaking? Leaks are very common. And so you just spiral them in and put them in. Very cool. So but these roots are very- From seedling, how old are these guys? These are three weeks. Okay. And then they will be in this channel for how long before they're harvested? Uh, three more weeks. So six weeks total. Yes, in and the you, winter. And you can grow all year round. Yes. though. For us, something has always gone wrong in the summer. Not heat, we got heat down. Heat's fine. Okay. No, the issue is uh, we've had two tornadoes, three hurricanes, oh. six plagues of insects, and two lightning strikes fought, fried the electrical. We've had gunshots. We do not uh, prescribe that we are gonna be on op operation between June, July, or August. Okay, not because of heat, but because nope. of weather. We got heat down pat early on, because that was an issue early on, but nope. We have understandings with those, but yeah. No, I was standing right over by the ladder when somebody decided to uh, do some target shooting oh, and no. they got this big, nice, pretty berm and of soil, you know, nice backstop and all that. And they put their targets on top of it. And if you know anything about shooting, oh, no. you know that that is a terrible idea. So of course the bullet goes through the woods and through the thing and comes in here and pings off one of the metal and then breaks part of the system over on this one, actually. Oh my gosh. And so, and key on this, just make sure you pull, uh, carry it by the correct side, otherwise you'll put the channel in backwards. Oh, okay. And so. So then this goes into the full system. Yep. Like you said, for three weeks. Yep. Now, what do you do with the medium when you're done? So the medium goes in uh, and is just functionally inert soil. It's functionally sand at that point or, or equivalent. Okay. So it is basically renewable. It's not it like is. in a trash Oh, no, no, no. Project, this, is, this, is, this is perfectly safe and perfectly fine. It's, that's the key is for hydroponics, you can control any aspect of. And so you want your medium or whatever you work with to be as inert as possible. In fact, okay. there are 
big systems, huge systems that use sand and they will just create plastic troughs of sand mm. because again, you want it as inert, uh, meaning non-reactive as possible. Yeah. So we have one employee, uh, okay. Matt, who works for me, and then my family helps extensively. Okay, um, so you're not really a one-man show. No, well, okay, so I am, anything that is not done, I do. Okay. Okay, so. So you're the I, fall guy. Yes, <laughs> and I'm also the, uh, the first one that comes out here and does stuff, and the last one to leave on a lot of it. But okay. yes, uh, no. Family is very helpful on a lot of things. That's if, awesome. if there's an issue, if there's a problem, if we have a hurricane coming and I need to batten down the hatches, they're the ones that I can call to come out and help. If I'm behind, then they're the ones that I can depend on. And, and now we have water. Like that, you just planted how many heads of lettuce? 18. Wow, in and like so, a minute. <laughs> yep, it's relatively simple once you set it up. Keeping it balanced is a little tricky, but okay. once you have it set up, it's it's not terrible. So it's a little bit of maintenance. It is. Maintenance is key. You got to check the nutrients every day. You got to check, make sure nothing went horribly, horribly wrong. But yeah, so. So this all seems very technical. So before this, I was a chemical engineer. Does everybody need to be a chemical no. engineer to do this? No, uh, no. I've helped uh, people set up little operations or uh, even some big operations and you can be this is, you can go as technical as you want or you can keep it as simple as you want. And as I described actually a couple weeks ago, I had to describe this. When you do say nutrients, okay, there is whole calculus of formulas and equations and all this stuff you can do in charts and graphs and as you raise the pH or you use this acid versus that acid, it changes the absorption rate of these things or you can figure out a good mix to work with, good enough, and then a cup out of, you know, even like a coffee mug out of your thing, you scoop, okay? That much in is this many uh, points on, uh, a, on the nutrient meter. And that would be EC or CF, depending on which uh, measurement system you're using. And we can actually show that. This is a nutrient meter. This is what we use to make sure that everything's the correct anything. So you just stick it in. So right now it's a little low, okay? So I, right now in the winter, I like to keep it at eight. Why? Different plants like different levels of nutrients. Um, okay. And the idea is to run it as hot as possible, not temperature wise, but as high of the nutrients as possible. In the winter, the plants are uptaking less water. So they need a higher nutrient because the total amount of dissolved salts needs to be still there. And so if the total is going down, then the percentage of your salts in the water has to go up to compensate. Is that, so you said that's in the winter, is that because of humidity? Nope, sunlight. Okay. Uh, we have 30% less sunlight right now than we do in summer. Makes sense. Um, okay. Even though you're in a greenhouse where it keeps things right. temperature wise okay, yes. we still don't have as much we, UV lights. Yeah. Yes, uh, and actually, yeah, UV and infrared are the first to go away. For a lot of this, uh, we have considered putting in red lights. Uh, UV is fine right now, uh, but the uh, infrared is a little low. And you can see that, and not to poo my own stuff. So this part has more direct facing southern sun, but this one that's facing uh -huh. more to the north is greener. Is a little greener. Now, so that's now farming preference versus restaurant preference. A restaurant might prefer the more variegated uh, coloring scheme, okay? Because it uh, looks prettier. Yes, lots of restaurants come and go on that, and that's really a shame because I prefer long, long-term uh, customers, but, and friends for that matter. They liked as white as possible. They wanted it as, so they didn't want green, they didn't want uh, any of that, they wanted as, as light a color as possible. Really? That's fine, hydroponics, we can do that. And what you do now, is- Now, does that change the nutrient level of the- It does. Okay. Uh, it's a much, much lighter flavor, and basically they didn't want the, uh, they don't want any flavor on the lettuce. They wanted purely on their products that they were putting on the lettuce. Okay. Which I can understand. That's, I get that. Oh, so uh, they're not looking at the lettuce for nutrients right. specifically in that setting. And then this is our uh, pH meter. Yeah, if you're gonna do this any kind of, any kind of more than like even a hobbyist, even um, if you're just trying this out, cool. Guess and, and kind of work with it. But if you're gonna do any sort of like- more This than kind six, of scale? Or even just a home system for more than six months, 
buy the electronic thing. Okay. It's an expense. I know it is. And it may be out of price for uh, some people. This is, I think this was 200 bucks. Okay. The other one, about the same. Wow. But again, so when I say that this is as simple as it needs to be, see, it just tells me, so it's bouncing between these two lights, so it's a five. I need it to be eight, so I need three more points. I don't have to know the exact, or well, I do know, but, uh, but like Matt, who works for me, doesn't have to know, he doesn't have a mathematical background, doesn't have a science background. He doesn't uh, need the equation written down no, no, to work out. No, he just has to know how many cups of that and we have it actually, I, I've actually balanced that. I changed functionally the formula uh, on that side so that one unit on the pictures is one point on here. You are bringing me back to AP Kim with balancing equations over here. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, we'll get to that in a second, but yes. And I took all of the chemistries and all of the, the math. So you said that you can figure out by using just a cup to give you so many, so many points. Yep. How do you figure that out? Can, because uh, not so, everybody has a chemical engineering background. Well, are are there equations honestly, out there, or there there are. Uh, okay. In fact, a lot of the, a lot of the science has already been done, and I'm terrible with names. Otherwise, I really would give credit to the uh, to the ones that came before us on this. This it, the equations are all out there, but from a regular person's perspective, you. Uh, it'll take about two hours for whatever you do to the water to integrate fully. Okay. To fully mix and everything. Two hours is, is a very safe number, okay? It'll okay. probably be faster, but two hours is safe. Take one unit, whatever you decide one unit is, pour it in, wait two hours. Or you take the number first, pour it in, take a number after. What's the difference? Basic math. A minus B. So you can use, people who are interested in getting into something like this can use someone else's math yes and, and not even in the standpoint of like working through an equation but they can say have this material this cup pour it in at this well, number yes or you can uh well it's linear so one quite literally you just stick your stuff in your water usually this will be a cf of about two for uh most uh well water okay ours is filtered but from there you add in a unit of stuff and it goes up one point goes up one and a half points or something then you say that okay one unit equals one and a half points ah so you can just kind of do your own trial and error yep. that way i see i am and understanding now generally speaking as long as you're not half again over your target number you're not going to kill it instantly you will lose some nutrients but yeah you talked about having restaurants that you sell to yes. i know you go to the farmer's market what other avenues do you use to sell this because this is a lot well Actually, right now we're at half production. Well, we're a little less than half production. Really? We ripped, as you can see, there's a lot of empty space here. Yeah. So we tore out half of the system because we are actually expanding. This system is kind of at its limit as far as what we can do with it. There are ways to make this more productive. They're not as feasible for what we want to do. What we're going to do is uh, do a a long tray system here, and exactly how that shakes up, um, even I'm not 100% sure at this You're point. You're still figuring it out. Well, we know the direction we wanna go. So that is, uh, so there's the deep well system, or right. deep culture system. There's a shallow culture system, which is functionally this thing, but maybe an inch deep instead of a, a film of water, and as wide as you want, and just long trays. It's functionally what this is. Okay, um, and these are upside down. Yes. They look like that. Yes. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, this. And functionally this. And so we'd go up about halfway up and it'd be 72 feet long and four feet wide. Wow. And we'd have four of them on this side, or yeah, three of them on this side and four of, or and three of them on that side. You're expanding, but who is your primary customer? Oh yes, sorry. You're okay. Um, so actually right now with where we're at, uh, we can we sell at, out at market. In fact, we're underselling at market. We could sell more at market. Okay. So we do about, uh, we're down to about 900 heads of lettuce a week. Wow. Um, from 2,400 at uh, full tilt. So from, wow. from here down was all lettuce, all of this side, and then this up here was tomatoes. Okay. And what we figured out is we did the tomatoes in the wrong direction. And so that's why we tore those out. And that's one of the big things is, is the ability to shift a system was, is far more important than 
almost any other aspect of it is, is how, how easy is it to, to, to pivot from this system to something else, from this way of doing it to something else. That's the key thing that we've figured out over the years because there were a lot of mistakes early on. Okay. And, uh, and you've been doing this since 2011? Yes. Okay. Built the second half in, I believe, 2015, 16. Interesting. So this is the seedling room. Ooh, uh, it's like a little layer. Yes. Uh, we take the seeds that we are using this particular week and we plant them. So in the medium. Yes. So the medium is dry like cardboard when you get it. Yes. And then when it gets wet, it gets to like that mushy. Yep. Now, some people swear up and down that you need to soak it beforehand. I've tried both ways. I have not seen an appreciable difference and it seems like a pain to work with a very heavy substance that is wet and dripping everywhere. Mm, and it probably falls apart and breaks what? on you it's too. It's not terrible on that. Okay. Um, but it isn't great. Okay. So like if you were if you were to hold it like this, it would probably break in the middle. But you could hold it like this, okay. and it would be fine. Safe structure. Cool. So then you have yeah. your seeds, and you don't, if you're if we don't have to plant if you don't want no. to. No. Uh, yeah, we're not. Yeah, we already planted yeah. for this week. Okay. Uh, but this one of the reasons why I picked today is because uh, we would still have stuff for you to see. Awesome. But these are what our seeds look like, uh, and these are coated seeds. Okay. Because those look a lot bigger than your typical lettuce seed. Yes. So typical lettuce seeds, if I can get this back in, is, looks like this. And we can't get everything uh, pelleted, but we prefer pelleted because it's so much easier to work with. Because... <laughs> yeah, there's like this, 500 seeds right there. <laughs> yep, that's enough seeds to do two of those uh, tray uh, sheets. Wow. And, and you do one seed per tray? One seed per hole, per... Per uh, hole, that's what I meant, Yes, yeah. and... Um, We'll mark on the side what what seed type goes where, but that's mostly for new people when we've had new people working out here. Gotcha. Is this for what it us, looks like once it's... So again, we water them and cover them, and we actually leave an incandescent bulb on them, and they sprout hey, in about a day. look at that. That's really cool. Yep. So you have a lot of trays here. Yes. How many total seeds are right there? 828. For the week. Yes. Wow. Is right there. We're down a little bit because we are going to add Napa cabbage. And so we're- Because this is six weeks out from being harvested. Yes. Right. Uh, so so we're, adding, we're adding Napa cabbage. So I need to make room. So we are adding, I believe it's 72 uh, heads of Napa cabbage. Okay. Four channels. Very cool. Yep. Now, uh, this all feels very technical and I have a science degree mm -hmm. <laughs> and it feels very technical it feels very formulated um you obviously have the background and the brain type to just dive into it and be okay but where did this come from so that's uh an interesting point okay so was in chemical engineer finishing up my degree master's degree needed a internship to finish out the program for the for the path to work and for me to hit my class uh my uh the you know, the rest of the master's program and all that, for everything to work, you needed this internship. And Indianapolis had a wonderful hydroponic farm called uh, Good Life Farms. Darren and Deb were a lovely couple that moved out of the big city in New York City and, and wanted the much quieter life of a farmer. Their, the, the, the premise, by the way, was uh, plant design, which is what I was going into, how to design factories and chemical facilities and all this was really functionally no different than designing a hydroponic setup. It's stuff comes in, stuff goes out. You design the middle to make the change happen. And so... So you just it, happened to find the hydroponic the, farm that would be accepting of your program? Yes. So or that program, your program would accept? Yeah, the program would accept it. They were happy they had a cancellation on an internship. And so, yeah, it's room and board, and uh, but uh, uh, unpaid internship. And so you work six days a week and you take the day off. And so we'd get the first week done and then we start up the second week and it's like, okay. He turns to me and goes, okay, cool. It's your ship, run it. I go, what? He goes, oh yeah, by the way, my family's uh, depending on uh, this to uh, survive. So uh, don't, me uh, don't mess it up. And he had 40 acres of field uh, that I also did work because, uh, you know, that was the whole internship was farming. My focus was predominantly on the, the stuff, but did everything. And um, yeah, the hydroponics, I was amazed at we could do 40 acres 
in an eight hour period between the two of us, everything that needed to be done in a given day. And we could spend two hours doing an equivalent level of uh, produce and production in hydroponics in, in two hours versus the eight hours of work. And we used mechanical advantage, you know, tractors and combines and whatnot in the field or in hand, hand harvest. Uh, and I still talk to the, uh, talk to them. But for a summer? For three months. Three uh, months, okay. The, the fall semester is really the whole thing uh, was it. Uh, there was a family issue at home, so I had to cut it uh, a little short. But, but by that point, I wasn't, uh, and he signed off on me uh, uh, for the, the internship, and that part was fine because most of it was non-related to this, but this portion over here, how to design the system, what, what were the design factors, and how, and then I did a redesign for him, which he used later, but what mistakes and how could, from a chemical engineering standpoint, could you, because that's, you don't always get, on the plant design, you don't always get a fresh facility, you know, oh, okay, here's cleared land, you get to build everything from scratch. No, more often than not, you have someone come to you and say, I bought this and I wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. It should be a simple switch. It's never a simple switch. Yeah. Uh, it almost never has anything to do with the other thing. Yeah. Uh, clearing the property almost is always a better option than, yeah. than work than than shoehorning something else. Man. Uh, but that's a whole other thing. So you uh, kind of fell backwards into finding the hydroponics, and you, I you did, just fell in and love. I I came back, you know, and I still keep a beard, but I had no beard at the, when I went up there, very short hair, uh, and came back hair down to here because <laughs> had no time to go get you know a thing, beard down to here. Had a Mennonite family while I was up there come at the farmer's market, ask me what family I was from. And they were lovely people, they were great. Uh, we got to talking about how inside their rules we could actually make a hydroponic thing set up. Well, that's uh, really cool. And that was a fun discussion. Um, and they were great people. Beautiful markets up there, huge. So the farmer's markets up there, love the markets here, they're great. Markets, they're a different breed of creatures. So you have your table and it's four wide and seven deep of people from the moment the market opens to the moment the market closes. You know that's where I'm from, right? Really? <laughs> um, I, yeah. believe, I believe the market's name was the Blooming t Bloomdale or... Um, Bloomington? Yes, market was the one that I went to. It's big. It's a big oval near a running track. So... Or was that the... No, w no. Darren went to the Bloomington. I went to the... It's in downtown. Speedway? Oh, in downtown? Yeah. The Indianapolis Winter Farmer's Market? Yeah. Yes. We were vendors there. Really? Mm -hmm. I got back here. I have a nest egg. Dad uh, invested in real estate in the 08. Uh, okay, housing market. And didn't do well on that. And okay. so we ended up with so we ended up with this property cleared as one of the, the 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 fallouts of all that, and not nearly what he put into it, but he at least got something out of it. He had this, and I was like, "What would you say if I just said no to the whole chemical engineering thing? I mean, spent you know four years, five years on this at this point. And, you know, what, what would you say if I said no?" And he said, "Well, I mean, okay, show me that you can make this work." And so. He had an office that he really wasn't using at the time a lot because he was a work, uh, at work a lot. But So I moved some of the furniture over and I built a hydroponic system in the office. And then I learned uh, that you really need a catch tray so oh, I, no. <laughs> and uh, learned how to put flooring in. Uh, but that's a whole other thing. Got uh, tomatoes, uh, uh, squash, and uh, cucumbers uh, were the first things and some herbs and spices. Um, so what did you do with those? Sold I, them at the farmer's I market? Sold them, um, I sold them to a couple of restaurants and they said, sure. And so figured out costs and, and production size and and then did a, a formal plan on, on how to build this as a input output. Um, made mistakes. There were there were things that I put in that I figured were necessary and they weren't. Uh, and then there were things that we thought, you know, okay, we really should have done this. but. Showed him that we could do this and used my nest egg and he uh, signed off on, or he co-signed for a um, business line of credit for me and and we and built here, this. here you are. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. But, and that was in 2011. Yes. And we, well, actually that was 12 by that point because uh, there wasn't code for how to do a, uh, a 
permanent greenhouse in the county at the time. That's a good point. Other farmers that I found in the area, their greenhouses are not considered permanent. No. This so is a permanent structure. This is a permanent structure. So that's a that's a four inch slab oh. uh, with footings and the and the that's schedule twenty or schedule forty. Uh, two inch structural steel going five feet into the ground. Wow. Uh, this thing, technically the plastic will go first, but the building is rated for 332 miles per hour, I believe. Oh, well past a hurricane. Yes, so, well, there is one key thing. The end wall is not. Oh. And so during Zeta, the end wall, everything else was fine. Cause like all the roofs are slanted, everything's done up so that the, the predominant wind during a hurricane will will just flow over this except for the end wall uh and we're gonna fix that before the next hurricane season is and we got a design that we like we're gonna taper it down but uh yeah so that end wall uh was perfectly standing six feet in from where it was supposed to be oh no it just sheared all the bolts all the way around just and just slid the whole me. thing it was perfectly fine and then the plastic left because the whole thing turned into a windsock yeah the system you were telling me off camera a little bit. This is your new business venture. Yes. You and are working into getting into a new system for yes. your hydroponics. So this is the deep well or deep culture system. And the this is what most people think of when they think hydroponics. This is the one where you float the stuff across. Oh. And so we're doing tomatoes in this. And so it'll go all the way down this 80 feet long, four feet wide. And we'll have roll up sides and we have that all set up. So we have it all ready to drape over the sides. Uh, we just have to reinforce this. Okay. We did a test and it was a little more bowed out than I was. I see it bowing a little well, bit over so there. So that is actually just the, that is the wood oh. warping a bit. It straightens out when you get the water in it, but mm. there was just in the middle, there was just a little more out than I was. It was actually uh, five eighths of an inch uh, more than I was comfortable. Again, back to technical, but that's uh -huh. me. That's me, not the system. Okay. Don't let me being technical. Throw you off of this. Throw system. you off on this. So, so you float this, the plants on this. Yes. Yeah, so you, uh, yes. And we're, uh, we're not going to move them down. We're going to have a fixed, uh, floating system. Okay. And what we're doing here is, uh, a combination of tomatoes and potatoes. Oh, tomatoes above potatoes beneath. They actually use roughly the same, uh, nutrients. And again, like I said, you can push it so that they overlap and then hit that middle point. How would you put potatoes in here? Easy. So the, potato plant is about yay big and then the potatoes are going to be underneath and then we will have hatches and you open up the hatch and you don't take the potato plant out you reach in and you grab the potato so the water stays at this level that it's at nope it stays at this level oh so the are the potatoes going in the water yes what yes potatoes I, can grow in the water i i mean it when i say that you can grow any plant in the world anything what the strangest plant we've ever grown so we've done radishes and, and um, carrots and stuff like that before. Okay. That part's fine. The strangest plant we've ever grown before is some madman over in uh, the UK crossed bread, Brussels sprouts and uh, kale and made kaleettes. It's a stalk with little uh, kale heads on it that tastes like cashews. What? Oh yeah. So, and you can grow that in hydroponics. It's a brand new thing and you can use any seed from any regular stuff in hydroponics. Taking a plant from the ground and into hydroponics is problematic because okay. the plant doesn't know that it has an unlimited supply of nutrients and it uptakes too much at once and then dies. Okay. There's ways to mitigate this by dunking it in or overfeeding it in the ground and then it'll, it'll stop absorbing as much. There's ways to mitigate it, but again, you gotta almost walk it over okay. instead of just dumping it in. Yeah. So you so, start with seed. Yes. So we start with seed and, um, in there and then we, we grow the plant up to a certain size and then we're going to transplant it in here. Uh, and if everything is timed correctly, we should have that after the last freeze of the year. If that doesn't work, we have a covering that we can put up and over and then we have a heater we can put in here. And heat the water. And heat the water. Whoa. So that's this. But so this, you were talking about regenerative uh, farming. Right. And yes, right now we're using recycled thing. We're using byproducts a lot as the means to make this work, but it is not strictly speaking a regenerative process. It is next door to it, but this is, or could be what happens here is that you could have, um, fish in here and they'll just swim back and forth 
or, um, and like this one is, it's gonna have a recirculatory system in it because you have to make sure your dissolved uh, oxygen levels are good, not just for fish, but for the plants. Okay. Um, it, affects, uh, it affects nutrient uptake. Right. So this will have, um, or could have fish in it or shrimp or anything. Oh, um, I didn't even think of like the other water creatures you could put in here. Oh yeah. Squid. <laughs> you want to talk Matt, about off Matt, the wall. Matt, who works for me, absolutely wanted cuttlefish. Oh. Uh, but they, they will pick and eat the, uh, uh, the, the potatoes as far as we can figure. Mm. Oh, that's a good point. Yes. What won't eat the potatoes? Ooh. No, no, no. Actually very little because uh, we'll eat the potatoes because the skin deters them. It's actually not terrible. I thought, wow. it would, I thought it would be, but uh, no. So, so where did you get this idea? This? Yeah. I did have... you just like randomly think of this or did oh, this yeah. come from somewhere? No. Nope. Uh, I designed and uh, built pretty much everything out here with the help of others. Let's let's not with say... With the manual help of others, but I'm thinking the... I, like the, the, the design work? The design the idea the, from the, it. The design work on almost everything out here is mine. Wow. Uh, from the system in there, I didn't buy the system from anybody. I designed it. I bought the parts from various places. That's the thing that's really helped me out is uh, look at other industries that has a product good enough or even identical to what you were looking for because it may be super expensive in your industry to buy a hydroponic this or they have some, uh, so like they have these trays uh, for carrying stuff on hydroponics and they want like 150 bucks a tray. And mind you, you, you use these forever, okay? Right. Or you can buy a baking sheet for two dollars and fifty cents, uh, stainless steel or aluminum, and it's also good forever. We use baking sheets. It de just depends it, on the industry name. It depends on the industry name. And the industry's demand. And there demand. are whole industries of people that simply buy the product over here and sell it over here under a different name, and they mark it up. Wow. Because this thing is this special thing. Uh huh. Or it's also called a baking sheet. Uh, <laughs> That's crazy. So yes, we are strongly considering uh, seafood of some kind. Uh, generally speaking, for most of your stuff, like especially like tomatoes, so lettuce is at an eight. Tomato from a nutrient level. Yeah, nutrient level of eight. Tomatoes are at 32 oh. to 36. Oh, wow. That's your big thing is, is new, what's in the nutrients, you can, you, can, you can push to make them close enough. Gotcha. Okay. But it's the nutrient levels and the pH level that's going to define what two things can be next to each other or in the same system. Wow. And so, um, but yeah, we are strongly considering that uh, for this. So heat is always an issue. We are trying a new thing. It was the original stuff, the, the original research I found, the oldest research I found called it a Canadian well, but the official term in the, uh, in the code books and now is a ground tube. And I really think they should have stuck with Canadian well. Okay. And by the way, we had some rain the other day, so this is all full of water, but this actually goes another 12 feet down. 12 feet down? Additional 12 feet? Yeah. So it's, it's like 15 feet? 15, 16 feet, yeah. Jeez. So don't fall in. <laughs> there's a there's there's literally a plank to get out. What is this? And I will walk carefully, but yes. what is this? And you should be fine if you fall in. Just, you know, come I back over to the... I can swim, so okay, that's good. fine. As long as Down, there's no, like, spikes underneath that's no going to impale it me. Is just, it is just dirt. So, and again, just do be careful. Yep. Uh, so, this is a gr underground air system. And we are in the process okay. of uh, doing it. But this blasted thing keeps flooding. Okay. Uh, and we have to wait for it to be dry to finish it. But... So, it's a... You have, like, tile under here or something? Nope. So, the whole purpose is at about 12 to 16 feet down, the ground is a, uh, around here. It's different in different places, but around here, it's about 65 degrees. So you take the cap off of that, goes down, goes around, goes back into there, and then it does the same thing that way. Okay. And it goes into there, into that uh, blue box over there. Okay. And then it sucks the air underground. And so even if it's 98 degrees outside and a 20 degree heat index, it will be 65 degrees when the air comes in there. And I can cool the air wow. to 60, to whatever the ground temperature I, I go to, which around here is 65 degrees. And American Geological Survey uh, Society, or, and I'm probably butchering your name and I apologize, has maps with temperatures. So you can see what your area has. And for the cost of two, uh, I, I pay, the, the fan's cost is about the same as an 80 watt light bulb. 
So you're going to fill this back in with dirt? Yes, all the dirt goes back in. Uh, Once it dries out? Have to finish. There's, so, there's a connection here and a connection there that I need to finish. What level above sea level are you right now? Because we're pretty close to sea level. Nope. Actually, really? normally, we're, normally this is, yeah, this is all rain. So this is the amount of rainwater we get in one rainstorm. Now, mind you, that field over here actually drains over into this. So this is not just downfall. Downfall. But uh, no, the other day while you were in town, uh, we got one of our bigger rainstorms. You're going to fill this in with dirt. Yep. yep. And it'll be basically a closed system. The air pumps in there. Where did you come up with this idea? It's because uh, I've seen most... I've seen some of this for, and maybe this is why you call it a Canadian well. Yep. So I've Paul and I looked at this being from Indiana about doing something like this for geothermal for the winter time. Yes. That on that deep underground, it's warmer than yes. it is at ambient it's temperature. So it's the exact same thing. You just did it for the opposite way yes, to cool it down. It heats in the winter and cools in the summer. Well, that is really interesting. So you it's, just uh, took the idea from the northerners yes. and applied it to the south. Is anybody else down here doing stuff like no. that? No, uh, but in theory, if they do the thing, so we're under the IBC, uh, which is International Building Convention, our code. Uh, might be a little off on that, but anyways, uh, but the IBC 2018, and we will update to the IBC 2024 at the end of this year. Um, and that's how the county leapfrogs. Okay. They, don't, they don't do each one, they do uh, every couple of them. And so they skip the 2021 and they're gonna do the 2024, to my understanding. The 2024 one should actually have this in the code book as a, just a regular thing you can do. And I've known about it for quite a while, but again, that's the technical side, so I, I subscribe to the, uh, to the scientific journals and I peruse them. Do I understand everything that's in there? No, I call it 20%, okay. 15%, but I go, okay, if I'm reading this right, and sometimes I'm not, and I have a fun weekend of, for me of trying to figure out, <laughs> okay, is this actually doing what I think it's doing? And you do this and you go, okay, so for the cost of the fan, and so originally when we built the system, we were going to put uh, an 80 watt uh, fan in there, just big, basically a big muffin fan. And actually you might have seen it, it's in the back corner there. And that just sucks the air in and that's good enough. You find ideas through things like medical journals. Scientific journals. Scientific, journal, scientific journals. Yeah. No, some medical journals too. Really? Uh, yes. So anything science, technical based you look at, anything agriculture based Any you're looking at, anything in other industries really, you're looking at, you're just looking at new publications. What are people doing out there? Yes. And how could I apply it? to so, what I'm doing here. That's that's kind of your premise here. Yes, so one of the primary ways, this is one of those ideas that spawned in lots of places all at once, but the one that came to me of this, so one of the main ways of doing, um, we were doing Dutch buckets. It's a bucket system for our tomatoes. And how you get the water in there is you is use this little uh, tap line that has a spike that goes into a tube and draws the water off and then goes into a hose and goes in and then you have another okay. spike that you go into the roots of the plants. Okay. That system is actually a quote unquote failed IV system for the medical industry. So when you say medical journals, yes, there are ideas that is technically a failure over here, but if you walk it over here, it's exactly what you need. So That's just so be cool. open to the idea. And by the way, like this whole thing sounds very technical. Oh, I have to see what the ground temperature. Dig a hole, put a pipe in it, put a pipe into your thing. One of our biggest expenditures around here for, for energy efficiency or even energy expenditure is AC. Yeah, it gets hot down here. It gets very hot. I would imagine then coming full circle that that air temperature isn't humid. It is not. It's probably very so dry. That, and I didn't show you while we were over there, but That's okay. there's a little uh, pipe that was up in the back uh -huh. uh, thing and it looked far smaller. That's because it was much smaller. That's, so hill goes downhill, water goes downhill. So that all the water from the system that would drain out from the humidity goes to that side. And then we're gonna, uh, we have a pump down there and that drain and that pumps the water out. That's one thing you gotta watch out in a system like this. You have to have some way of getting the water out because you will you'll get waterlogged yes yeah and then you got to dig a 20 foot hole again and yes <laughs> there's so much going on here which i think that you enjoy and you love that as a mm -hmm. part of farming and your drive comes from being able to just figure things out and, and go from there but 
if there is somebody out there who wants to do these things but maybe just doesn't have your brain or they have you know questions are, are there resources that you oh yeah go to how, how do you get so, your resource material well so my research material okay so a lot of this i got from just knowing the science behind it okay if i know the basics i can i can extrapolate from there but if you know nothing about this okay you know you know you said you took you know ap chem you didn't take chemistry at all you never got beyond algebra or trig okay or whatever the required last math is um for high school okay that's fine call your state ag college okay for mississippi it's mississippi state university louisiana it's lsu uh louisiana state university uh -huh. so on and so forth if um usually it's state state uh university is, right. is usually what it is sometimes it's a little different for indiana on... it's not indiana university we'll just put that on camera real quick okay it's purdue it is mm -hmm. okay yep so call <laughs> them and they will help you and at this point if you have if you even just do ground crops okay soil crops if you have a soil issue if you have a bug a contamination uh the leaf looks funny okay you've grown this for 10 years but now all of a sudden it, it's doing some curly q thing send it in call them up send to, they'll tell you how to package it send it in it's usually free okay it's free in mississippi they'll tell you they'll they have labs they have scientists they have doctors that uh you know whose sole thing is to study plants and study farming and study agriculture at the most technical level possible so you don't have to uh because again farming is fun farming can be technical farming can be an exacting science but it doesn't have to be put plant in you know ground grow plant okay <laughs> is 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 you know as simple as it needs to be if you want to do it commercially you need to go a little more technical than that because you have to you know really utilize your time and your effort and your energy responsibly from there just wing it what's don't build a don't build a multi-million dollar company without uh without lots of research but if you're doing a home garden um like uh like you said earlier a five acre you know uh garden by the way if it's acres it's not a garden <laughs> it's a small plot this whole property is four and a half acres the greenhouse is a 14th of an acre and at our peak we did uh we did just shy of 3,000 heads of lettuce a week you can do it on on much less um if you want to start out an early very easy hydroponic thing to do is microgreens microgreens oh, yeah. and young greens okay is a proto so you can do microgreens without nutrients and that's a proto hydroponic thing you can do them with nutrients okay and that's full hydroponics you can go aeroponics ground crops twice as fast half as much space to hydroponics all the way again to aeroponics so start easy start simple yeah give it a shot uh if you have a fish tank you can do this at home if you have a uh a vase you can do this at home uh it's that simple pull test strip for your ph meter change out the the nutrient water once a week uh you don't need a tester for for a small setup like that watch exactly how expensive the uh the home kits are online and you know actually really think exactly how much is this all this going to cost uh, if you're not technically savvy on drilling and screw, you know, and doing electrical and all this stuff, cool, buy a kit. That's fine. If you have some know-how on that, maybe consider building it yourself. Uh, some of the kits can be exorbitantly expensive for yeah. what you get. Personally, uh, to start off with, Tower System is a wonderful one. It gives you a very wide range of crops to grow. I was just thinking of that one. Um, and the beauty of the tower system is, like I said earlier, is when I walk into the greenhouse, my first question is, what's leaking? Yeah. Okay. The NFT system has a propensity to leak. Okay. And so if you do, uh, and you may not have seen it, you walked over a trench that was cut into the concrete to drain the water off because I have flooded the entryway before. <laughs> uh, I just walked in and like, oh, I have four inches of water in here. Well, I know what I'm doing now. <laughs> thought I was going to a restaurant with an order. Now I'm dealing with this. <laughs> so the towers, if they so get the, clogged, they just fall down. So the tower system, like you said, is has a tank at the bottom and has a tower on top of it. If something fails, water goes back into the tank. Right. It's not a big mess. It's not a big mess. I mean, sure, it could fall over, but, you know, the, the table, an NFT table could collapse and just 
fall over. Right. There's always going to be a what happens if it fails. Right. right. But tower systems are excellent because you can have permanent plants or temporary plants on it. The lettuce is a temporary plant. You pick the whole plant. Right. Strawberries would be a permanent plant. You keep the plant there. Or tomatoes would be a permanent plant. You keep the plant there. I mean, sure, eventually it goes away. But you take the fruit off. You take the fruit off. So it sounds like there are a lot of ways that somebody could tinker, get started with hydroponics. Yes. Even more ways that somebody could be a commercial operation. And what you have going on here is yes. so cool. And like we talked about, your your innovation is amazing. What you do to take ideas from one place and put right. them in another, I think is, it's unique, but also I think it's a message that needs to be shared. Because all too often we get caught up in our own niche and yes. we get caught up in our own category and industry. And we forget that at the end of the day, everyone is a human mm -hmm. and we all have ideas. Yes. And getting just those, those talking points and, and those thoughts out is so important. Is there anything out there that you have on your heart that you wanna share, that you think it's important for people to know about you, your farm, your operation, anything like that? Uh, whether you wanna do farming or you wanna not do farming or anything, Go check out your local farmer's market. If, Why? One, uh, you're gonna get a better product, okay? It's, it's faster from the field to the, the table. There's a reason farm to table is better. There are certain things you have to do for transporting and certain uh, limitations that you have to do for transporting that are simply not as advantageous to you as an end customer. And if you're interested in hydroponics at all and you wanna putter at it, but you're now, okay, I wanna go further on this, your farmer's market is your best bet to get started. And yes, I come at this from a very technical standpoint. It does not have to be technical. Most things in life actually don't have to be that technical. It's not that difficult to figure it out. Trust me, people that are more out of touch with what uh, are less capable than you really have done this before and have will do this again and can do this. You can do something like this. You can start a farm, you can start a company or a business or something. And the, the single biggest mistake I made on all of this, uh, don't quit your day job before you uh, actually have income. Uh, that, was a, that was a monumental mistake. Very, very close came to, to, to running out of money. So. But is there something to be said about taking a leap too though? It is. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Don't not take a leap. Okay. Maybe but, a calculated risk. But, but maybe plan out, okay, uh, I have these expenses, I have these, you know, incomes. Okay. But if you work a day job, what about, you, get, you usually get a day off once a week or so or twice a week, depending on your job, an hour. Can you uh, dedicate an hour to this? Hell, if you have a small system, you could do everything you need to do in an um, eight by eight foot area in an hour once right. a week and so just give it a shot and you know poke at the little system the little system is going to be nothing like the bigger systems once you do a bigger system like a four by four an eight by eight uh you know something a tower a couple of towers you'll see actually how it works but a lot of this a lot of farming is hurry up and wait yeah you, you do you do a whole bunch of work and then you you sit there and wait like a sh like we showed you you plant the plant you stick it in the channel you stick it on the table now it's there for three weeks. I don't come back to that particular channel for three weeks. Right, yeah, let it do its thing. It's not terrible. Yeah, awesome. Well, I just wanna thank you so much for letting me come out here. This is such a, a whole new world for me personally, but just we haven't, we've done quite a few tours now and we haven't found anybody that's doing this. And this is so cool. And the way that you innovate, it just is absolutely amazing to me. I, it's very inspiring. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And any links that you've said or given or your website or anything like that, uh, they'll be in the description below. And um, yeah, I just want to say thank you thank for you. having me out. Thank you. Thank you.